On October 26th, President Obama said this about the attack in Benghazi. The minute I found out, found out what was going on, I gave three very clear directives. Number one, make sure that we are securing our personnel and doing whatever we need to. Number two, we're going to investigate exactly what happened to make sure it doesn't happen again. Number three, find out who did this so we can bring them to justice. And, you know, I guarantee you that everybody in the State Department, our military, uh, CIA, you name it, uh, had number one priority making sure that uh, people were safe. Okay, so according to the president, he gave this directive to secure U.S. personnel. Um, you know, the minute he found out what was happening, everybody in his government knew all about it. So, so what does that even mean? Why, wasn't, why, why did everybody die? And if he issued the directive, where is the record of it? Bing West, he's the former Assistant Secretary of Defense and co-author of Into the Fire, first-hand account of the most extraordinary battle in the Afghanistan war. He wrote that book with Congressional Medal of Honor recipient Sergeant Dakota Meyer, who I just was with just last week. He's a remarkable young man. Also, Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, he is the uh, uh, former United States Deputy Undersecretary for Defense for Intelligence. And gentlemen, I want to talk to you about first... Um, uh, General and Bing, come, come in at any time and help chime in on this. Explain to the average person how this happens. When, the, when uh, an embassy is taken or an uh, ambassador is under attack, if I'm not mistaken, it is required that the president is notified by the Secretary of Defense, correct? Of course. Okay. So there's no doubt in, in your mind, General, and, and Bing, there's no doubt in your mind that the president knew immediately had to be notified. Well, the president was in a meeting, called a meeting, and had the, secret the secretary of defense and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff with him in the Oval Office one hour after the attack, and they had perfect information because the people on the ground were talking to them in real time. Okay, so there's no doubt in your mind the president knew? Absolutely, he knew. Oh. Okay. When he said, I issued a directive, Bing, what does that mean to you? Well, that means that the Secretary of Defense has been told, do everything, he said, do everything you need to do. So the Secretary of Defense is sitting there, as the general will say, right, with the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs. Holy smokes, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs just walks out, picks up the phone, calls the theater commander and says, get your assets moving. A, a written directive will follow. General? General? Well, we've got an Africa command <clears throat> sitting in Stuttgart, Germany. A directive would have been something that would have been relayed immediately to General Ham, telling him to take all necessary measures to secure that uh, embassy or consulate compound there and protect the lives of our Americans. I see no evidence based on what I've seen, uh, what the president has said. I've seen no evidence that that order was ever uh, issued. Okay. Um, and there would be a written, there would have to be a written document for that? It's called an execute order. It's signed by the president. Now, the, the theater commander can deploy forces internal to his theater. That but would he, be General Ham. That would be General Ham, but he cannot uh, employ them in a combat situation unless it is of such a nature that it is uh, designed to protect the forces under his immediate command. Okay. All right, so let's go to General Ham because there's this rumor going around now that he has resigned or been forced out because there was a dust-up between him and the president. The rumor is he said, I'm, we're going in. The president said, stay put. He said, we're going in. Within 30 seconds, he was relieved of command. Well, I believe that a discussion like that may have taken place, but I do not believe he was relieved of command. He was in his office in Stuttgart yesterday, and I know that for a fact. So he has not been relieved, as some have reported, and he was certainly not arrested, as some of the reports uh, have, have sort of indicated. But I believe that there could have been an, an, an argument between him and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs or the secretary, uh, it, because he's a good man. He's a warrior. And I know that he wanted to go and do what he could to protect the lives of those citizens. Okay, so here's what I find confusing. Um, um, and Bing, help me out on this. You, you first. I know a lot of people in the military, and they're good, good, decent people. I know it had to drive them crazy. Why is no one speaking out about this? Why is, because you know that General Petraeus had to know. He has to know what's going on. Right. Why is no one well, speaking out? 
Bing? Well, it, really, in a way, this is more, and I'll flip it to General Boykin because he has a reputation for, for speaking out as a general. But there is such a thing as the general officer's uh, protection society. And General Petraeus said this didn't happen inside the CIA. He flipped the ball outside the CIA. General so what does that Dempsey mean? Well, that means that it was. That, that means that it, that means that he was saying this. You have to put back on the Secretary of Defense and the President of the United States, not us. What I'm surprised at is that General Dempsey has allowed six weeks to go by and has not said a word. As General Blinken can say, any time we're in a firefight at a company level. The Army prides itself, or at a battalion level, the Army prides itself on an immediate debrief within 24 hours where everyone speaks. And, and you don't put blame, you just say what we did right and wrong so we all get to so understand what we had done. Tell me what and, that means. And this never happened. Well, first of all, let, let's keep in mind that the CIA operatives on the ground are talking to CIA. But CIA is talking to the Department of Defense because the Department of Defense is the one that has the capabilities to go in and rescue these people. Right. And Petraeus knows all of I mean, this Petraeus is, knows that as well as anybody. He came out of that community. Right. Now, it's also important to understand that in that theater, you have what they call in extremist counterterrorist forces. They are sitting there in Stuttgart, Germany, right where AFRICOM headquarters is. Their mission, Glenn, is to go and rescue people, an embassy. Uh, a, a ship underway or whatever, that's why they're in that theater. So what's the question that we should be asking the President of the United States? What is the one question? Because I learned this from the Lewinsky thing. First it was, I didn't have sex. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. Right. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. And they went for six months. And at the end, it was then, well, okay, he did, but it doesn't matter. We were asking the wrong question. If he did it, does it matter? Is that the same question we should be asking ourselves now? If he didn't if he held people back, does it matter? I don't even think that's the issue. I think the issue is why didn't you demand that a military force go into that compound? We have forces on a four-hour alert, national forces, that can go anywhere in the world with four hours notice. And then you have those in extremist forces sitting in Benghazi, I mean, sitting in uh, Stuttgart. Why were they not launched? Why did CNN beat us to the compound? Why didn't you, once this thing began to unfold, can you put think boots? of any reason? Can you think well, of any reason that it, beyond the president just is not that kind of guy? I think he's not engaged. That's the first thing. I think he uh, is it, not engaged on this issue. I think that he doesn't this present a danger to the United States. Number one could responsibility be a bit. of the president of the United States is to protect the integrity of the United States, its okay. citizens, to include those deployed. Okay, Bing. Final word from well, you. Well, I, I think, un unfortunately, it may even be a little bit worse. And that is you've got this group think that President Obama said there are no more wars. I've taken care of the terrorists. I've killed bin Laden. And therefore, the group was incapable of recognizing what was going on before their eyes because then they would have had to launch American military forces, in extremists, as the general says, into combat. And, and that blows the lid off, saying, well, I've solved all the problems and we're getting out of wars. So I'm afraid that there was a philosophy not to do anything. I have to tell you, I think this is going to end up hurting the military a great deal because the, the only people the military still trust are the only people that right. the people still trust are the military. Right. And if we can't trust the military to step up to save lives I agree. and say, look, we are not sabotaging anybody. We don't want to hurt anybody here. We, the truth does matter. And force somebody's hand, I think it hurts the military. Glenn, let me just say that this statement by our Secretary of Defense that you don't commit people into harm's way until you have a good picture of what's uh, on the ground. They had one. Uh, they had one. That's the first thing. But the second thing is these forces like Delta Force and SEAL Team 6 and these in extremist forces, they were created to be able to go into an environment where there is not a lot of intelligence and save people's lives. That's what they exist for, okay. and they were not used. Thank you very much. General Bing, thank you very much. Uh, by the way, Into the Fire, well worth uh, the read. An amazing, amazing story of American heroes that don't run from the battle. They do the right thing.
Back in a minute.